So I think maybe some of you are familiar with the CRA newsletter. This is uh, Gordon Christensen's uh, group. Um, they test products in dentistry and they uh, theoretically have no axe to grind, they're not paid by the companies, and they evaluate products in dentistry. And they evaluated this laser. Um, the best part of this is, I think, they asked 81 laser owners, this laser, 81, if they would buy this thing again. And all 81 said yes. Um, it's actually very interesting. I don't want to go through this. The writing's too small, but it's it's really uh, it's really very interesting. Um, the overall satisfaction nine point seven out of ten. Patients have accepted laser therapy eighty two to nothing. So. I can give you copies of this if you'd like to see this further. Um, but it's interesting because this is an unbiased uh, evaluation of the product. So what are the advantages to your patient? Single appointment surgery. Let me clarify something because someone mentioned this before we started. There is no initial preparation with this technique. There is no scaling and root planning by the hygienist when this technique is used. It's all done at the, at the time the procedure is done. One procedure, not multiple appointments, not the patient coming back time after time, one appointment. No incisions, therefore no sutures. I won't say no swelling, let's say minimal swelling. The swelling they get from the anesthetic, really. It's not really from the procedure, it's from the anesthetic. This is big. No time off. You know, people, I, I, I assume that most of you heard this in your practices, people are very conscious of how much time they are taking off from work these days, and rightfully so. There is no downtime with this. People are going back, they'll go back to work, they'll play golf, they'll work in the yard, they'll do whatever they want. If it's not that day, it's the next day. Let's say it's two days. It's still different from conventional treatment in that regard. Under the best of circumstances, there's a lot of residual soreness. I've been doing this for 25 years. I've heard it all. And I think I'm good at what I do. But I'm not above telling you, you know, it doesn't, it's not that comfortable for every single person that walks through the door. But this is. It has been, I will say. So not taking time off, not losing time off to recover is huge, particularly at the moment. No root hypersensitivity. How many patients do you see for uh, supportive parallel therapy, you can't even go near them. You can't turn your Cavitron on. They won't let you. It hurts. Uh, and that's where Procter & Gamble and Colgate come in a little bit with some of their products. But, you know, I mean, that's just a reality. I'm not telling you something that I'm making up. I think all of you know this. Reduced chance of cervical caries. Let me tell you the reason. Because there's no recession. I'm not making an incision, I'm not removing really any gingiva to get flap access. There's no recession. So there's less chance of cervical decay, class 5 decay. That's a big thing. When patients get older, as you guys know, I mean, those, those, those lesions are, they're tough to do sometimes. So with this laser, you won't get the same recession as you'll get with conventional osteosurgery. Now the papilla in the posterior will shrink. If there's bone loss, You'll get a little shrinkage because of the reduction of inflammation, but you won't get um, you won't get the look that you get with apically positioned flaps, which is a lot of cementum and a lot of tooth length. You don't get that at all. And again, very big, I think. You can treat patients with aspirin, Plavix, Coumadin. It doesn't matter. You may want to speak to the physician and tell them, but there's no particular difficulty in doing that. Everyone can be treated. If they're taking cyclosporin, if they had a kidney transplant, anything, it's fine. Not a problem. And no damage to the root surface or pulps. Advantages to the hygienist. Happy patients. What a novel idea. 
an ability to scale roots that are not hypersensitive and improve patient compliance with, with plaque control. You know, if patients are in pain, they don't, run, they don't want to do what you ask them because it hurts. They're not going to follow what you say. But with this, they might. You have a fighting chance. And then there are advantages to the general dentist. Now, there's a handout with all of this on there. The advantages to everybody is on a handout. So we don't have to go through this. You guys get your handout? OK. Those are the advantages. Again, it's important to say preservation and regeneration of bone around individual teeth. That's just really huge. Because what you do when you do osteosurgery is very often, well, what you're doing is you're restoring bone, and you're usually taking away bone. So what osteosurgery is, it's treatment from the top down, coronally to apically. This is apical to coronal. It's a big difference. That's how we get regeneration. And that's what really this is all about. I think um, when I look at this slide, I have to say that uh, it, it makes the point of this lecture very worthwhile, at least to me, because it gives you something new. It gives you a new talking point in your arsenal to have that conversation where the patient is not going to roll their eyes and say, you know, not that again. You've been telling me I need periodontal treatment for five years. I really think it's important for you to have this information because if you can get people treated, you're doing them an incredible service, not just so they keep their teeth, not just so they can eat, not just so they can smile. Maybe they'll live longer. Maybe. That's what the evidence indicates. So by giving them the avenue to do that, it gives you a new talking point. Because hygienists are the guardians of periodontal health in the general practice. You guys are advocates. You're certainly educators. Don't you educate all day? You know, you're really responsible for oral health in your practice. And the general dentist who you work, for, uh, who you work with, uh, their job is to fix what you find, to fix the disease and make it go away. But it's your job to find it, mostly. So you certainly have a passion for what you do, and you have a passion for treating periodontal disease. And maybe knowing that this is out there may make that easier for you. Let's look at some clinical stuff where I can show you kind of what this looks like when we're doing it. This is what it looks like at the end. So we're working backwards. This is the seal, the fibrin seal. And this is the poaching that I was talking about. Um, this laser does not burn blood. It poaches blood. I used to have a different laser. 10, 15 years ago, I actually had a different laser. There was something big on the market. That's why I know the difference. It was a carbon dioxide laser. There were a few around in town. And they, you know, uh, there were some periodontists around the country who were using these to do certain procedures. But it's nothing like what I'm showing you now, what it would do to this, instead of being red around the marginal gingiva, it would be black. It would be charred blood. OK? Maybe you've seen this. Um, I sold my CO2 laser for veterinary use. I did. It's now used at your veterinarian. Um, but you know, that proves that just because it's out there, just because it's a cool device doesn't mean it's worth anything. 